the all around hero, but he doesn't do it. Mm, I just look at it as they have three kind of team fight do stuff type heroes, and none of them kill Jug. Dude, what about a Visit? I thought we were going to see so much of that hero. Every pub, like, I, I was only home for like three days in between tournaments, and every Chinese three. pub I watched, I mean, right, it was just Secret versus like Newbie, and for, Visage was first picked have every single game. Have we seen it like fail at this tournament where people tried it and it just didn't work? We've or seen nobody... like, I've seen one game win and one game loss. It just, okay. it was just crazy because, right, they play RD. Maybe that's the difference, right? You're playing RD over in these mm -hmm. pubs, and Visage is just better than every other hero, I guess, if, if some aren't in that pool. Yeah. There's a lot of counters that, like, there ruin are, Visage's yeah. game. So what hero? Do you want to save Ooh. Nisha's hero for I'd last? I'd rather or? see his hero because you know his lane opponents. Okay. That's why I would like to see lane. Slark. Slark's okay. I think Slark overall is a better hero than Jug, but I also think that Slark here... It's nice because all of the stuns LG has picked so far, you... It looks like this is all the stuns they're going to pick, for the most part, or at least they want them. And I think Invoker, or not, sorry, Invoker, Faceless Void is insanely strong here for LG. Yeah, yeah. I, really I agree. good against Invoker, pretty good against Tiny, and insanely good against Slark, Five and you have the E Rubik setting, yeah, I, I agree. dump damage into it, the Chrono. It's an Ami special, too. And, and I just want to talk about the Slark versus Jug real quick, because I think that the reason we don't see as much Jug is just because he's more of a burst DPS carry, whereas Slark, um, also Jug can't really buy Midas, Slark yeah. can, and Slark just scales better. Um, Slark gets a kill, and now he's looking to hunt for even more, whereas Jug, you Omni Slash, all of a sudden the bypass, and all of a sudden you gotta get away, and yeah, that, it's a good call. Is, this say. is the Void pick, like, you, you got to good void game. They only oh. have very limited disables. Uh, yeah, the Slark Leash is good against you nowadays. Cancels the time walk. The matchup used to be very one-sided for Void, but now with the diffuse breaking your time walk, it's not 100% one-sided. You need a reasonably early BKB going against like this Invoker who, if he just stands way behind, he'll always have this tornado, this EMP kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. I think, I think Ame goes Midas Maelstrom. BKB, bit, yeah. I believe that's the build he generally goes. Yeah. I think that would be a really reasonable yeah. series of events, or series of item builds for Ame here. Kyle says OD gets banned out, a hero that we can see just take over games, and obviously very good versus Slark, has talked about that last series, and very good with the Faceless yeah. Void, obviously. Now what hero for maybe is the question. I feel like any, you, you don't want, um, like, the Quap, uh, Storm, Puck, remaining. Ember type hero because there's just too many disables and roots on the side of Secret. You don't like, like a Lena here? Um, too squishy. Maybe Lena would be alright, but I'd rather maybe something Death like a Prophet. DK. Exactly. The DK DP seems like the better option just so that you have both the tower pressure that the draft lacks at the moment, uh, plus a hero that's just more sustainable. And with the sniper ban, you gotta assume it'll be the Death Prophet. Oh! The Shadow Fiend. Of course. That is a lot more damage. That, that is, is a lot of mid-game damage thrown into the Chrono. I don't mind SF against Slark, actually. You yeah. defend yourself. If Slark but goes on you, you just ult on top of yourself. It's a little annoying. Is All I'm saying is, in the mid-game, Slark cannot fight now. He absolutely cannot participate in the mid-game. Until he gets what items? I would say you're going to need Midas Defusal. Five seconds remaining. But before yeah. you're fighting. You might not even go to Fusal the damage because you need... Items that give you health. Does does TA make sense here? TA just isn't quite the lane winner she used to. Be. I think it is a good TA game. But you, do you just want to completely dumpster Shadow Fiend, or do you need something better for their overall game? Because we only got 20 seconds left, because this is their reserve time. Hmm. Mid one do. How about a mid silencer? Is that a mid one hero? Everything's a mid one. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. See, last pick will be the Pudge. Oh, Here we shit. go. And if you didn't know, Pudge versus Shadow Fiend, this has been an awful matchup for Shadow Fiend. I mean, I guess, I mean, back in Dota 1, obviously, you know, the Rays is stacking, but you guys like this. They have a You're lot of roam this. potential. Even though this is a three-position tiny, if the SF 
pulls ahead in lane, it's really hard for Pudge. He has a lot of sustain, but the raise damage is just insane. See, they have to gank I, this guy like, over and over they're again. They're doing right? what they did earlier when they had a gyro middle. You just cold snap plus yeah, rot exactly. on top, and you just like instantly die. It's, it's the same with rocket barrage. It was That's old school. So we used to see Invoker, uh, Quaswex Invoker mid, right? Yeah. With a Phoenix rotating. And yeah. you just cold snap Sunray. And it used to it just stun, stun, stun. You anything. can't play Dota. As to your point, now it's a roaming Invoker, sure, but it's the same concept. And I, I mean, sure, you might be concerned about rotations if you're mid one, but you've got to feel confident because in any scenario where you have even numbers mid, secret come out ahead. In yeah. a two-on-two -two scenario, for sure, one-on-one, -on -one, like, you've got to assume mid one is, like, this is the, you know, Alliance Navi might be El Clasico, but when it comes to mid 1v1s, I feel like SF versus Pudge is, like, the iconic going back, like, 15 years. Yeah. It's, it's the mid matchup. Okay, so we're seeing these drafts and show me when. Look at that. He is an invoker player, even though he's a four. Yep, so he's been playing it for a long time. Being the Elder Titan on the other side. So is this. You really like the Pudge pick. You don't think it's cute at all? It's just it's a good hero right super now. Good against oh, Void. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, that's what's so yeah. crazy about it is that this Pudge is is good for multiple different reasons. It's insane synergy with the secret lineup, but it's like one of my favorite. It's probably my favorite anti Void hero because yeah. it's near. Imp you have to get the Pudge in the Chrono now. And you can't really kill him either. Yeah, it's not like you, you can block the hook. Yeah. If you block the hook, it's you just die. Yeah. Like, a good pick here it definitely feels nice and so who are you? it sounds like you guys both like each draft obviously this chrono is going to be very good pretty good against this slark if you had to give a little bit of a draft advantage who are you giving it to i gotta I, give it to secret i love both drafts to be honest i just think i'm always gonna root for the pudge so and, and you even have tiny pudge you have cm like the one thing that sucks about pudge is that hook costs so much mana and you have no like you don't want to buy a soul ring or any sort of mana regen if you don't have to, and you don't here because you have Crystal Maiden. Like, how does Secret draft a last pick Pudge, and it seems perfect? They even have Tiny. Tossing him in, tossing him out, like... You do have zero armor on this middle Pudge. Is True. there a chance you just get... I mean, obviously you get an insane amount of HP regen with your Flesh Heat, but... You, you just, just win get the block, out of lane. and you be within tower range. Okay. That's all you gotta do. That's it. Easy game. And it does look like he is gonna try to start to blow both of them, right? Sometimes you see these middle heroes uh, go and help out these runes like we're seeing top. No one's gonna be a 2v2. Zai is gonna get right click. There's gonna be a toss and Zai will get the toss into the steal. But he does get bashed. He's gonna take a ton of damage. Won't die, but man, he is getting eaten alive right now. Will he die? Body blocked by Yaps or helping him out there. So much damage, but they get they get all four runes, by the way. Yeah. That is a four rune win for Secret, and all it took was Zai's healing salve, which he's got Pays gold. For itself, right? And let's see the, the middle block. It looks like mid one is going to win it barely. It will be on his side a little bit more. Now, yeah, you have to be careful. He does have that first flesh. Nine heat. health regen. And he has effectively 96 damage when he's last hitting. What? Oh, the quelling blade. Oh, he just ate a branch, oh, but the quelling blade plus the base damage. X Nova. He's just trying to trade hits with Zai Yap, so obviously doesn't do the most right click damage. She says, I like that maybe you went raise level one. That was necessary because you actually can't outlast it with 40 damage against 78 or 71, rather. 5 0 against the 3 0. The other lane we really haven't talked about is going to be that bottom one. It's going to be a Sand King Rubik. Chase down versus a crystal maiden and a slark pretty strong lane on lgd's side oh, right mid one still has three stacks on him that was really well done by maybe he's keying them up so that he can keep threatening pudge under tower doesn't have he has mana in two mid one might need to be a little bit careful just gonna right click the stacks do wear off Top lane, we've seen a lot of pressure. There's the cold snap again. Ame's only level one, just getting smacked up. There's gonna be a toss, that's gonna be a first blood. And with that Bassy level one. He just solo killed a mid, I watched it. He went for the range creep on Pudge and maybe read him like a book, hit him with the short range, hit him with the medium, and then hit him with the long. And he had his chicken coming out. Well, he didn't have any regen coming out. Do you almost, I mean, obviously you just want to rot and die instead. Feed a little bit of gold there. Rune spawn, it will be an arcane rune up top, I'm sure. Shadow Fiend would love to get this mid one's gonna have to deny it though. Just go take it himself, because he's already getting low. He has to pop his healing self he just brought. Top lane again, X Nova. 
in trouble, goes down, Zai goes down as well, and this is a, a bloodbath up top. Boots, Bassy already up on the Invoker. I'm surprised, I thought, I thought bottom lane, you got a Rubik, you got a Sand King, I thought you were going to be getting some kills, but now it's all top. Yeah, Slark is... I'm telling you, there's a lot of safe lane carries you just don't mind playing into Sand. Early on, since they're just maxing Sandstorm nowadays, it's you're just not threatened. He is 1-0-1, yeah, which good. is fascinating. I have not seen that before. It's the right choice, though, against Slark. That's why you used to own Slark as Sand, right? Like, that was how you played, where you always threaten this stun in the middle of a creep wave with a bunch of... Um, um, ca uh, what? The Caustic finale. Yeah, yeah, Caustic, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jim. Um, and then all of a sudden, bam, he Thanks, pops right up 400 damage. Yep, they are just gonna be trading some farm now. Top lane as well, Xnova is just running at Yaps, or he is at 50% health. He knows Zai already used his Tosto, so he's not in too much danger. And Ame, he may have died, but he's still 15 and 8. FY taking a ton of damage down bottom. He'll be able to chase. I'm looking at middle, 22-7 versus 14-1 right now. Somnus having a, an absolutely great time here. Yeah, but it's all about the Pudge 6. Dramatically said. You gotta Pudge always watch out for online. TPs, right? That's when that's when lane starts shifting up. You get a hook, you get a dismember. People are just gonna start TPing in and mayhem begins. Up. There will be a bash. There's going to be an EMP. No one wants to lose all their mana, but it looks like Ame, he'll lose a decent chunk. There's going to be the tornado. He's taking so much damage. He's just going to go down. What? Yeah, Nisha committed with the uh, leash well, to try know. to get the Sand King, and instead the Sand King just turned around Smoke and first striked him. And Zai, yeah, still going in. There's going to be a Spirit. He's going to try to refresh it. He's doing 200 damage a hit. Let's see what he can do here. Zero, Bob. zero. He needs two more hits, it looks like. Toss, send it back. Oh, yeah. man. Is he under the tower? There is. There's going to be two tower hits. There's going to be a kill. Zai baits him in. And wow, Yaps or Zai, they are, they are having a good time. You see the Void has 1911 CS, but two deaths now. Mid lane is a little rough. You did pick this Pudge into the SF. I thought they were going to put a lot more attention gank-wise onto this mid lane to Secret, because I knew Pudge would not do well in a strict 1v1. So I have to believe what they're going to do is go for mid-game ganks, where they choose to just let this SF kind of get his early game start that he's getting, and they're going to try to pop him like a pinata. And as he's so much net worth. The Elder Titan, by the way, has two stacks in the big camp and two in the small camp. He, oh, he's just going to, is he going to kill Zai? No, the toss away under the tower again. <laughs> There's going to be the cold snap EMP coming out, the tree throw as well. Won't be able to get the kill, but so much damage, and, and Zai survives. All it would take is one more hit there. And yeah, deja vu a bit there, throwing him under tower. Looks like we might have our first rotation middle, but it's actually FY. He's actually just kind of chilling around here. Hooking the catapult under tower on Pudge. That was oh. cool. Dude, they glyph it. <laughs> we remember we theory crafted that before the tournament started. We were like, okay, Marana can kill catapults. What else can deal with them? We're like, really oh, Pudge, thought, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh. They're going to try to push forward. Somnus 39 and 20 having an absolute great game. But guess who's here? It's Zai. He's going to try to find the oh, toss. No. He gets the range creep instead. Puppy TP's in. Now they're going to try to turn it on to this FY Rubik. It's a 3v2, but it feels like LGD's the more scary. Nice hook. Nice hook. Oh, FY will get brought down. He's just going to try to chase after him. There will be the tree No flesh heap stack. Gets the kill. That is three heroes rotated. And he's still going to pick up the rune here. It's a haste rune as well. This is scary, Zai. You know, be careful for this toss. Yeah, he's going to toss one. Still not level six on the pudge, though. And there's going to be two raises. He going to go in for this kill. He gets the third raise. And there's going to be the fabled F wild take that. Zai is going to throw out his stun. There's going to be a tornado as well. I just don't think they can bring it down. He has treads double rape, and he might turn it. And this farm on Shadow Fiend feels so scary right now if you're secret. And there's going to be the lift. There's going to be a raise. There's going to be a second raise. And there's going to be an easy kill. Shadow Fiend is uh, getting a little out of control right now. Bottom lane, they're going in. That will be a stun out. Chalice will be fine. Nisha is farming pretty well. 36 and 8 now. Void is 34 and 15. Does have two deaths, though. Is going to move forward. Gets a first hit. Bash on Zai. Get a toss him back. Obviously, we already saw the time walk used. This is a 11 kill in seven minute game. We are just running at each other right now. Shadow feed back to the jungle. 
That's what he can do, right? Just farm these stacks, have a good old time, dominate lane, dominate the jungle. It's so easy to get gold. Now Pudge is level six. You kind of got to get out of dodge mid, catch a hook, and you're get dead. eaten, you're dead. It doesn't matter if you have a level advantage. Yep. All it takes is usually plus one hero, but there's always going to be a hero re willing to TP to kill that Shadow Fiend and share that experience. Looks like he's going Yules on SF. Maybe drums based on the wind lice. We've seen a little bit of each. What would you like more? Does it... Does it Feels like it does kind of matter versus Pudge. Do you want that Yule? Yeah, I personally prefer the, the magic damage build with the ET and everything on your team. Sanking's probably going to build a Veil. Yes, we are watching Chalice narrowly escape there. Obviously, he does have 24 agility stolen, so need will do keep dominating this lane. And mid one, he's just chilling out. He is scared, though. He won't even be able to farm on his own, even though the Shadow Fiend isn't there. Going to be a regen rune. Zayu has the bottle. Triple stack for Somnus top. It's gonna take it. I like it. They they use it early for the Elder Titan to get all the damage and dominate the lane, and then you just give it to your Shadow Fiend. Yep, and Kyle said he just has to get out of mid, knowing yep. where he needs to be on the uh -oh. map with his hero. Talking about mid now, it's a level six Pudge. He's running over here, try to kill these mud golems. Chalice knows something's up, because his smoke break, there is gonna be a chrono up top. Zai goes down, now mid one is getting initiated on. There's gonna be a stun, there's gonna be a stun. Fade bolt flies in as well. Yep, mid both. one drops. And this PSG LGD, they're looking great right now. Yeah, I love how Somnus left the lane, and then the minute his team comes back. The reason why you don't want to stay in lane is because you're like a liability uh, to your team, because they have to worry about you getting ganked. But you come with your team to help them get the kills and, and he is going pressure to this mid tower. Will be the drums that he's flying out right now. They're trying to defend this middle tower. Three heroes from Seeker right now. And that's a TP in. This Pudge doesn't know Chalice is right under him. He does. He's not scared. There will be a duck pop puppies here as well now. It's going to be a four on three fight. There's going to be a nice double stun. He's still in the sandstorm. They're taking so much dim. Zai's just going to run in. He's going to get the stun toss combo up on. There's going to be a tornado hitting onto four of them. No one's dead quite yet. They're going to look for the Shadow Fiend. This would be a big kill, but mid one just gets turned on right clicked down. There's going to be regen rune used by Zai. They kill the Elder Titan. Zai get a toss in puppy. Hello, Somnus. There's a stun by Chalice. They want to try to save the cold snap, stopping him from doing anything. Guess who's here? It's going to be Nisha. You got to bring the numbers. Chalice might be the next one to go down that's a triple kill for nisha he doesn't have the pounce but he doesn't need it now he will this could be a rampage at nine minutes in no because the other heroes top calm down settle down Grant. Grant. there's literally <laughs> nobody within six thousand <laughs> units of but them. what if he tp top and got the kill oh, okay Jack. okay you're right you're right but that what a yeah. turnaround it's yeah. now nine to nine you just got uh, you got a uh, four kills on the slark he got three permanent agility from that Yep, time oh, to check out the for you? net kills? worth. Wasn't that an ultra kill? Yeah, it was yeah, an ultra four, kill. But he, he just, oh, yeah, because he didn't yeah. get the attack on. You either have to yeah. be attacking them or be within proximity, yeah. So he might have killed somebody with, he somebody with Dark Pack, yeah. But either way, he's now suddenly got a Midas in a couple of moments. Yeah, like he's 100 gold away all of a sudden. Just like that, that's going to be it. About he's caught, he's caught the shadow. Wasn't wasn't maybe like 1,500 ahead of the game just a couple moments ago? Or yep. so, yeah. That's Guys SF in a nutshell. That's why I'm not a huge fan of the hero in this current meta. Middle lane. There's a lot of fighting actually going just on. diving under the tower right now. X Nova going to get right click down. Can't get the stomp and give me that flesh heap. It on the first board. Yep, yeah, on the board, baby. Yeah, you already see Zai. He's hasty. He's looking again. He's like, wait, one person fell for it. Somnus hiding on the right side under the trees, and now they're pushing this middle tower. Looks like LGD might have taken a very. There's going to be a lift up. Will he be able to raise? They pop the drums. They just want to run in. Will there be an eat? There will be, but it's going to be a kill. Stun flies out from Zai. Won't do too much. Bottom lane. We'll get the pounce up. Chalice gets the stun. Here comes the ulti as well. Will he just run away? Nisha says goodbye. That's why I love phase boots on Slark, because even when you're not in your ultimate, the extra movement speed boost is just so nice. Top tower, by the way. Looks like Ame might be able to take it down with the siege creep. He's actually moving forward. Wants to kill Puppy. He does have the chrono as well if he wants to use it on the Absor. Not quite, he's just oh, continuing to double push, bash. And oh my goodness, it melts him down. There's a lot of heroes here. They do need to be careful for that Chrono Zai. He doesn't really have mana either. And I think Ame's like, wait a minute, he really does. And there's a lot of heroes up here from both teams right now. And he does have the Midas complete on Void. It's at base, but a lot of attack speed from the Treads and the Midas. I said he's probably going to, yep, he queues up the Maelstrom. Probably just a nice, yeah, yep. 
Nice amount of damage with the 60 attack speed from Treads as well as the Glove of Haste, or sorry, the Mat Hand of Midas. And then you have the Maelstrom for damage. And you have the BKB. And you're pretty much unkillable this Ooh, game, to be honest. Bottom. Their drum going to be used by the Shadow Fiend. Puppy does juke nicely. They thought they were going to try to super juke, but he just did the simple walk in, treat, and walk out. And this will be an interesting game because you got a big net worth advantage on the Void now in comparison to the two cores of Secret that are the Slark. Yeah. However, you have a lot of methods of peeling him until the BKB comes up. You've got the hooks out. Um, I mean, you have a ton of lockdown. The invoker for the counter initiation. Uh, I think the BKB timing for LGD, as it has been traditionally throughout history, especially with this squad, like that's when they're really looking to get things moving. Feel like Shadow Fiend. Oh, you'll have it in about the next three to four minutes here. Yeah. Farming so quickly. Already has the Ogre Axe. And even, oh, takes the Tome yeah. for level 12. And I really like that on the sink. Chalice as well, going for the hood instead of the veil. Uh, might be blink afterwards, but I'm just, I, I really hate seeing veil like super early on if it doesn't seem to have a, a purpose. I think just otherwise, probably a little rough rebel. Go in, will be the EMP stunned out before. We'll get frozen in place. There is going to be the urn on top of that cold snap puppy. Just going to throw out the oldie. Chalice, though, as you said, he has a hood. He doesn't really care. And now Ame just comes down here. Puppy's like, I'm just going to keep letting it rip. No bash yet. Finally gets one. Gets a second one as well. Needs about two more attacks. Goes for the freeze. Throws out the Nova, but will just go down. He canceled the, uh, the W so that he could wait for the cooldown on Q and get those three creeps before he. Get it. Efficiency. Now top lane, they're diving. X Nova looks to be in a ton of trouble. Slark wants this plus one agility going for the stomp. Toss up. Nisha gets the kill, and this should be a tier one tower as well. This is up. Yeah, luckily, look at that. Gets it. Two seconds. I got the efficiency. He, he for needed us. the tower kill. And he gets both. That's a lot of farm. Now the top net worth in the game. 100 above the Shadow Fiend, who's about to be in the jungle and probably repass him, but... Radiance Middle Tower is under F attack. F-Wiles scoop it up, has an 8. I like this. Ame could be hitting a tower, but I walk to the camp to Midas it. That's all good. Such a is this the first time I think we've seen Radiant either of these teams play, right? Uh, for us, yeah. Uh, yeah. We... This is the first time we... Oh, no, we saw LGD. Yeah, Fnatic. L LGD. It's an interesting in comparison. We saw so much OG, but like yeah. these two teams, similar level. But different styles, right? Yeah. It's far more fundamentally sound. It yeah. like. And there's gonna be a TP in middle. There's two TPs. There's gonna be lift. You have the Aether Lunge. He's gonna steal the stun as well. Tossing back. Steal Seda? the toss. Pardon me. And now, Puppy. He's there. He's getting Sandstorm. Nice tornado hits on two of them. And Puppy's just gonna wander on out. Did Rubik just save the tiny with that toss? Could he not have? Yeah, it looked like he would just stand in the sandstorm, get stunned, but Us is out, and Zai's like, all right, cool. I got the arcane and I'm just going to be rolling on out of here. I was going to say roll They're wild. looking. Yeah, they're looking for him. I'm like, where does this guy go? Yeah, but even the ET spirit's scouting out. Let's make it out. There's a BKB up in about 500 gold on that shadow fiend. What about the Slark? Slark is going to defusal. I know you said yeah. maybe he won't, but it's, uh, it's it, he's Midas, having such yeah. a good game. That Midas defusal into BKB is the standard, I'd say, in this type of game. The Midas means you don't really want to fight mid-game. Drums mean you do. And then you go for the defusal into the survivability. He could consider other items, but I think they just have so much magic damage on LGD and so little right-click that it's pretty necessary. Look at that comparison right now. It's a rough one for mid one. Zero, five, and five versus the four, one, and two, and that hero damage. But mid one does now have a blink. He doesn't have it on him, but he is going to be flying it out soon. Top lane, we're setting up. Mid one's pose was way better, though. Just There's going to be the tornado. There. They go. Nisha hasn't shown himself quite yet. There's going to be a cold snap stun as well. Nisha's just on top of Somnus. There's going to be a fatal, so he's doing a lot less damage. Toss him away to try to save him. There's going to be another toss back. There's just two tosses everywhere. Zai's just getting bashed up. And there's just going to be one kill in this fight, it looks like. Maybe Zai. Almost out, but Ame will bring him down. Space made, though. Both uh, Puppy. One farming, farming lanes. PSG LGD group up as five. They do have a 3k lead on the chain. Oh, hooks over the regenerate. So with this blink dagger, do you start getting a Hulk lot snap. more aggressive? Can't cast Coil. 
He's in a little trouble. The stun comes out now. He's going to throw the Chrono. Whoa! He whips it right there, but he, no, he gets on top of the Slark just barely, and they do actually get the kill. Pardon me. 432 gold going his way. They're going to try to turn it around now. Shadow Fiend just throwing out a lot of raises. That ulti gets canceled, and guess what? You bring the numbers. You get the win. There's a nice stun. Not even a blink. There will be another one coming out from Zai, though. The Avalanche, it won't matter, and that's a stolen. And they just get out of there. Ooh, that chrono was perfect. It did catch the Slark, and yeah, he did. put and it to it where didn't. he did to try to make Invoker yeah. get caught or at least zone him as and much as possible. I really like that. And um, that's a uh, characteristic mistake from Seek because they had a blink on their punch that Radiant wasn't utilized for that attack. play. If you're going to make that middle, move, yeah, he needs to be involved, especially when you consider the, the way that kit works. In fact, you what can see him. Yeah. You can see mid one in the river. He's just not able to connect in time. If he's just five seconds closer, he's blinking forwards and throwing out a hook. And he's yeah. getting either the Void or the Slark, and this fight is totally different for Secret. Meanwhile, mid one does force out the BKB from Somnus, who does get the tier one tower, but 10 second BKB expended against a lot, against an Invoker, Pudge, Crystal Maiden, Tiny. A lot of heroes that punish basically killing you for sure if you're not in BKB. So hypothetically, we're going into the 30, 40 minute mark. We've got five slotted cores. Who, who do you guys like going into the late, late game? Definitely LGD. Is it just the core matchups, the Void against the I, I just Slark think kind of Void stuff, is or? the strongest hero in the game at that point. Oh, wait, what, what time is the, uh, what talent is the Pudge GP? Uh, 20. 180. Ooh, wow. He does get there pretty quick because of the XP talent, though. That's true. I've been seeing a lot more Pudges actually take the rot damage, but you just, you need that gold. I'm you know, a fan like of the XP talent I, myself. I, he he was too far behind. To not to, go it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Rot damage is, because the thing is, when you're ahead, you actually want the rot damage, because when you go it's XP, you actually level too quickly. And then it's like you, you die once, kill. yeah, at like 23 minutes, and you're dead for 90 seconds. You're just and like, you, oh no. You fed like 700 experience, yeah, or exactly. like more to another more than hero. That. It'd be like yeah. 3,000. 3,700 we combine. I mean, it rounds up 700 to 3,000. 3, yeah, yeah. There's still a freezing field, by the way, on this Rubik. He's gonna lose in about a minute, but it isn't a game-changing spell. But in team fights, especially within the Chrono, that would be a lot of damage. I believe is the proper term. On the bottom, getting close to that BKB already with that Maelstrom, the Midas. It's a 6k lead. Even though it's only five kills ahead, it just feels like PSG LGD is destroying this game. Farming officially. He's going Hurricane Pike. You like that on Shadow Fiend? BKB Hurricane Pike? Your job is to hit people in Chrono. So I think his game is very position based. So I'm not saying I love it, but it allows you to position around the Chrono a lot, around. These heroes like the Pudge, uh, the Hurricane Pike is the only way to, for him to get a leash uh, from the Slark without having to BKB. I think overall, if he's alive, he's going to output enough damage and uh, that synergizes with that concept. And there will be a smoke up from PS, but they won't find anyone. They even scan down there, won't be any heroes and it will be a two for two rune exchange as well as the main rune going to the pudge i feel like that's almost an insurance smoke by lg make sure that they want to secure these runes and that secret would have to 5v5 them if they want to take them ame i don't think they were too like trying to fight five on five per se because ame was 200 gold off bkb going into those runes and now he has it. Zai going to take mid tower for free, basically. They are trying to get a little trade going on here from LGD. This tier 2 bottom usually doesn't mean too much, but it is a tier 2 tower nonetheless. They do use fort as well. That's so not going to refresh. Looks uh, like they want to maybe try to push top as well. PSG, uh, see, we just want to buy some time. They're not really ready to fight. Um, he fakes out the chrono. They do a blink tiny. Yeah, but, uh oh, this oh, tiny won't be able to blink right now. Yeah, there's gonna be a bash, and he just pops the BKB. He doesn't care. There's Earth Splitter as well. Puppy is there. Willy Puppy. Oh no, no. Let's him go, and now we do see Nisha. He's just running. He's like, I'm gone. Yep. What's up? Yeah, PSLG, they are strong now. You've got the BKB Radiant timing. It's, it's go. And you want to kill. You want to go Roche, and then you can look to blow this game open. But secret. You want long, drawn-out fights. Abuse your positional mechanics and your peel. Hook people out. Toss people in. Rinse, repeat. Look for Invoker to get sick tornadoes off. And Nisha just trying to build up stacks and eventually be able to take out the LGD cores. But they're just not... You can't deal with them until the BKB's down. 
They do have Spear Vessel on Invoker, but he does not have any charges. And they do have BKB on both cores from LGD, so it's not going to be the most impactful purchase for the first item for your four position. On the other side, the four position is Rubik. Just picked up a four. You got a Tranquil Four Staff Aether Lens at 22 minutes in. Wow. You are farm. He's more farm than the tiny, and he's almost. Oh, okay. It's about the same now. Wait for the tower, and then you can say. Yeah, yeah, okay. He is more farmed than the tiny. Yep, and the sand king. Uh, and I like this move with PSG LGD because once you kill that top tier two, now you just look to cover this area of the map. Whenever you were watching Dyer play with Roshan as Radiant an objective top and top they're ahead, you want to see them control that Dyer's top Radiant shrine. It's the only way for Radiant to really get to Roshan and by just staying off map Bottom. and at all times. They're going to go for Ahame. He just pops the BKB though, Nisha. Strike click and had to use the ulti himself. Thought he might get Chrono there. There's no, around no, Zide's in a little bit of trouble. He gets his blink canceled by the spirit. Gets bait bolted again. Gets stomped. They're setting it up. But the hook. We, we see the save. There's a lot of heroes. Child's actually going to move forward. They want to get this tiny. They still have the Chrono. Need to be careful. Zai. He's there just getting right click. There's going to be a nice stun toss, but it won't be enough to save him. Or is it? Tornado goes up. Blink he one. bottles up a little bit and he blinks away. There's the Chrono, though. They're going to see two of them. He's like someone else can kill him. There's going to be the hook out on Yapsor. Will they be able to chase him? Chalice is there following. And this looks to be a three for zero trade. The long range, even though you got the punch saving, it feels like this Sand King and Rubik can move around and just catch up to anyone you hook right now. And it's going to be so hard for Slark to actually hit anybody. They have two BKBs, and they're going to have the force. They now have the Hurricane Pike, so two force devs on the side of LGD. And your leash is basically useless at this point on Slark. Not feeling good about our early predictions. Kyle, I can't believe I picked the same team to win as you did. It's okay. Everybody makes mistakes. That's true. The the PSG LGD this game, they haven't made too many of them. Yeah. Very clean. That's another hero. Uh, much like OG, I felt like PSG LGD was slept on. I think the highest I saw them in the power rankings was like sixth. Kind of nuts. Really? Yeah. I, I, you can, what? I thought people had them pretty high. I think them and Vici were, I thought they were reasonably high. I don't know which power rankings you're looking at, but... That's true. I mean, Liquid ones, yeah, they had OG last, I, last year, you know my, what I'm my, saying? My point is they were probably a team that should have been considered like a top everyone's three top something. three. Yeah, yeah, exactly, but they were more of a top six and... It's just if you can count on one person showing up at TI, it's always going to be a fly, right? Yes. This guy F just has God. that next level on on maps. They're going to go in. Yeah, he is just going to eat, eat, eat up, and there's going to be a BKB pop by Nisha. Same with Ame. They're just squaring up against each other. He is going to finally pop his ulti, stealing a ton of agility. But Puppy, he just gets turned on. What's he doing over here? Yapsor will save him for now. Puppy will get the freeze. Hits him with the time dilation. They want to chase him down. There's going to be X Nova actually dying to Nishu. He's stolen quite a bit of agility right now. That will be the kill on Crystal Maiden. And a one for one trade, or two for one, pardon me. And, well, they're just going to pop the shrine for man. They still have Chrono, so I wouldn't be surprised if they just go. They don't have a smoke, but that the bounty runes are spawning, so they're looking for Yavsor, who is going to steal it from Invis. I heard an Epi. Oh, yeah. oh, they saw an illusion room. They kill it. Zai's here. He's like, oh, I guess I'll take this room. There goes Chalice's ulti. Won't be very useful right there. Still up by 9,000 gold. When do you, do you, do you look for Roche soon? It doesn't feel like secret. I mean, obviously you have the invoker and, and a pudge, but it doesn't seem like the best, like, Roche protection like we've seen by other, other drafts. They just don't have any sustain on the LGD side, okay. so if they're going to hit Roche, they're going to take a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. So they have to be careful. They kind of have to get it uncontested. Okay, so you uh, just go for a kill or two and then... Yeah, yeah uh, as a general rule, there's three scenarios where you can Roche easily, which is when you do it so fast the enemy team can't respond, when you can do it without taking damage so that if they do, you're not in danger or you can just back away, or when you kill enemies and Roshan is under... Get ready. We've got a smoke and we have... Got they have dismember on Rubik as well. That at, that Etherlands drastically extends that cash range. It's the only thing, right? We have a BKB on Pudge now, so you can actually cancel it with that. They're gonna move forward. They're gonna find the Absor. He does get a nice tornado off, but it won't be nice enough. Gets brought down immediately. And Nisha, what do you think about Chronoing this? Ex Nova. Yep, there it is. There's gonna be the Chrono. He just get a right click him. Yeah, he's taking so much damage right now. He just gets brought down immediately. Level 20 on his faceless void. He's got that cast range mid one. Trying to run away. He has the rod slow, so you can't get him in melee range. But guess what? It won't matter. Chasing. They want more. They want to finish this off. 
There's only Zion Puppy left, and it looks like they will get away. It is nighttime. And guess what? You got the three hero kills. See you with the road fit. Not very often can you get Shadow Dance on a Rubik because Zark will pounce or Dark Pact during it. But when you get Chrono oh. during Shadow Dance, it is quite nice to steal. He was low health on FY. He used the Shadow Dance and they went back to full. And now he can actually check for wards while they're roaching if he wants to. But they're busy distracting Seeker, who's going to try to poke and prod at this age or this roach as it goes down. About a third health right now. Nova stomping some blinks with that spirit. Yep, the Will poke and prod there. Pudge and Clark are almost up. Gonna be tough though. It's going down to about the next three seconds. Even gets bashed twice in a row. The extra damage. Ame picks it up. Tornado barely misses. FY almost snipes him. Has a blink dagger now so far. Pudge is starting to catch back up though. Fourth actually on the net worth chart. Not doing too terrible. And he is going Lotus Orb next. We have a couple Lotus Wars, both yeah, it's Pudge just, and Saint. It, it's one of those games where you just have an answer to the Slark, and, and that's what makes the secret lineup just... It's dangerous for them, because no matter what happens in this game, Slark can just get Chronosphere, and your win condition is SOL. Sure, there's the hook out as a possibility, but when you're this far behind, it's very difficult to, to plan around those sorts of movements, because PSGLG can just get the chrono off on the Slark, and everybody else just goes and dives behind. You can find mid one, or you can just attack. stun him. Top lane, Zai. There's gonna be a TP, and he's gonna hit him with the time dilation. He will blink. They're gonna move forward that way. Stun does come out. Will we get a bash? Not quite yet. He's still trying to run. There will be the bash. Sandstorm damage there as well. Slowly getting brought down, and Zai trying to make a little bit of space, trying to get that tower. Won't be able to, and it looks like it will get denied. He did buy his Echo. Going for the Aghanims next. And well, we have almost have a butterfly, by the way, on the Shadow Fiend, who took the two damage per soul plus the Presence or effects building. I love that. He's doing a lot of damage. Yeah, he also the went the, well. for the attack speed. I think a lot of Shadow Fiends, uh, you can definitely get the magic build still, but if you're not, if you're going to go for this Drums BKB build, I really like the, uh, the just raw attack damage. There's the hook. It baits out the BKB immediately, but it Jesus. might just bait out his own death instead. He is doing a lot of right-click damage. There's going to clear oh, out the cleanups, and they're going for base. Yeah, the tornado actually hits him. Puppy, will he go down? One more hit. Oh, needed two oh. more hits. Dire Curry actually ends up going down with three sentries from this behind his knee shot. <sighs> well, this is going to be possibly a tier three. See if they want to go for it. Nisha just cutting the creep wave, killed the chicken as we just saw. So they don't have the sentry wards anymore. He's just gone. They can't get the tower because there is no creep wave. Yep. Slark never gets to be the strongest hero in this game, though. You're against ET, who Slark is a hero that never builds raw armor items. So you're going to have zero armor if you're ever near the ET. And you're also against Void, who yep. during your ultimate and, and BKB can just disable you anyway. See how annoying Secret is being right now, just cutting every single creep wave with Tiny's well Slarkin. Mighty sufficiency, 88%, not too bad. Two more for the payoff, my friends. It's deceiving how quickly your Midas accelerates your farm. I think the main part about Midas that a lot of people don't think about is that it's reliable gold. So when you die, if you have a Midas, you don't lose any of the gold that you use the Midas for. That's a really good point. I haven't thought about that in a while. Reliable gold's one of those things. Remember when it first came out, people were like, this is too confusing. And then, like, you know, some people understand it. And I'm sure the, the top of the pros understand how it works. But, but it's complicated mechanics. It's just weird because it's like it an is. item that you get 160 gold instead of 60 or whatever your creep you're Midas thing. And yet, as a carry player, I've noticed when I go Midas, I just scale so much better. And no I think way. It what I'm saying is it doesn't seem like that much, but I think the main difference is the reliable gold, which oh, is crazy. Really? It, it, when it was 200, that seemed like, yeah, you're going to gain a lot more gold. But the 160, it, it hasn't paid for itself yet. Yeah, and it's, it's 31, 31 minutes, minutes and he had it at 12 minutes, I believe. Yeah, so, so it's just deceivingly, it's, it's a weird item. I don't know. Oh, we're going to move forward. Ame, he has the chrono, but the cold snap with the creeps hitting him will slow him down enough. And they're just going to find Puppy instead, the sacrificial lamb. And it's going to be a, looks like Bloodthorn next for the Faceless Void. Ton of damage, and he's already 5k of the way there. We haven't seen him. 
of Yapsor yet. This support invoker doesn't feel like it's it's done too much. It just feels like LGD's been ahead the whole game because this, this mid lane went so poorly for the Pudge. Yeah, and they're uh, getting a Lotus Orb on the Sand King, which is going to be done here, and that's really good against the invoker, against the Crystal Maiden. You can even use it when somebody is at threat of getting hooked because the Pudge will dismember himself, so it instantly cancels it. There's a lot of use of the Lotus Orb. I also like to see it with Tiny, because whenever you toss somebody onto somebody and the Lotus Orb reflects the toss, it's always pretty derpy. Top lane, we'll get a little bit of damage on that Tier 3. Zai, he has been quite the hindrance up here for LGD. This is all you can do. Play dodge game. Apply pressure on a tower. Make it so LGD doesn't feel confident five manning down one lane. He is owning this tower top. None of LGD really wants to defend it, and there's going to be a full another creep wave coming. So confusing now that his tree sounds like a sword. So he being behind, oh, but he blinks out immediately. You Chalice uses no. the stun, and man, Zai, what a player. Nisha is going to have a completed Scotty soon enough. Did take the dark pack damage. Then you have two four stabs and two BKBs. I think force the uh, dark pack damage is just better. All the items right now. Is there any item where Secret can get right now and you're like, all right, this is a way for them to turn around these team fights, or is the farm just so high on LGD today? They need more than one item. I think you gotta go real late. This Pudge yeah. has to be big. Your Tiny's going to have an Ag, so he'll actually be able to contribute a lot of damage in fights from a distance. But the fact is, unless you hook the Slark, he's going to yeah. be useless because of Chrono. And Void's gonna hit 25 soon in the middle. Most voids have been taking the backtrack. Really? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, it's effectively 33% extra health as you assume normal distribution of damage. I gotta, I gotta say, it, we haven't really called it out yet, but mid one is currently 0, 8, and 7, and uh oh. Well, I lied. He is now a 0, 9, and 7 as your middle player, and that does not feel good. He has to buy back even right now. That feels like a big difference. He is currently. Fourth to last on the network charts. It's also a last pick, so it's yeah. supposed to have a good game. Oh, and they're giving the chrono. He turns it. Will he be able to find Nisha? He does oh. hook him out. He gets the E, but he pops the BKB. They get him in time. There's going to be the center as well, doing so much damage. They're just going to chase down Puppy. He tries to get away, and he will for now. Mid one blinks forward. Doesn't have the dismember yet. Oh, and there's a force trap. FY. There will be a toss in there. Can oh, they find Chalice? He has the Lotus Orb on him for now, but it looks like he will go down. He has a stun. He wants to make it to the hill, but he can't quite make it. Yules. I must have stepped on one kill something. for the mid and the carry buybacks as well as uh, they still do get the they get the melee barracks bottom actually the the good racks yeah they've lost 1200 gold there or 1100 gold yep. on secret that, that was a beautiful toss though that was really cool the toss into power illusion okay the illusion rune. They pop the smoke. They know this is our time. They Maybe have to they go before five. Chrono. And here we go. There's going to be Action Nova. They find it. This might just be a free kill. It looks like four step away. It is the cold snap, though, with the spear vessel. Oh, oh, oh. oh, my goodness. The fact that he has hook stole, by the way. On oh, void. my void. He's taking so much damage. He has BKB up in five. Will the four step be enough to save him? The cold snap. Oh. He makes it uphill. And there's going to be a oh, from Somnus zoning him all out. He wants to go for Puppy, and he's trying to get more hooks on FY. There's going to be his eyes stunned off there. Eden through. The dismember is there. They don't do the most right click damage through this BKB, though. And they make it out. Oh, my God. The hook from Rubik saving the void there. That was the one opening. In they had. He bought out. How, he bought out on yeah. Void. How do you steal hook, by the way? I thought I, that's that should be one ask. of the most impossible skills to steal in the game. And he stole Shadow Dance again, by the way. Yeah, that, that's Still crazy. The other one was understandable yes. because he was a Chrono, but that yeah, time uh, Slark just didn't use any abilities during the. Hook. To be yeah. fair, is his FY. And is I've seen. You remember that iconic play where he stole Phoenix Egg? He does have a track record of stealing spells he shouldn't steal or shouldn't be able to rat. And Void did take the backtrack at level 25. He had bought out for the Bloodthorn. That was like their it, one chance to it, win the game. It makes sense. I actually like this a lot because you have the damage, right? And it's not as if you need a bigger Chrono to just catch the Slark who you're hunting for constantly. And uh, this means that Void is just not going to be able to be bursted anymore. Yeah. Because it, it just procs randomly, right, on damage. Yeah, it's it is. just like the old backtrack. Yeah, assuming average, like, you're... You're dodging the amount of damage of equal damage instances. You effectively are giving yourself 750 health on Void, which is insane because you also have backtrack. Oh, mid one. Here 
it goes up. Okay, he's gonna fly. It actually will hit onto Ame. And look at this. He's just gonna right click him down, though. This member's already been used. And oh my goodness, Nisha is already dead. That Chrono's there. Roche is at 2,500 HP. You can't fight this now. He's gonna throw some trees into the pit. There's gonna be a tornado. They're trying to slow it down. Nisha doesn't have buyback, though. Zai doing as much damage as he can. Chalice is here with the Sandstorm. There will be a hook out. It actually will hit onto him. He didn't get the Aegis on Ame because of the hook out, but it won't matter. They turn it around and they get two more kills. There's gonna be a stun for Gaps. Or he's the next one in trouble. Double killing a god like for the Shadow Fiend. Yeah, both heroes had already. Those are diebacks on the Pudge as well as the Slark. Vlad's complete on the ET. I mean, you you were 14k down, right? You you had to try to make something happen, and they go for it. But the instant Chrono on the Slark, and you're just yeah. dead. I mean, it was the play mid that had to work when they hooked the Void to safety. That at the end of the day was the play that had to work, and anything past that is just much just less likely it. to work. Well, it looked like they were just ending it. Huh? Satanic it SF. I do love his build overall. Yeah. Just the mana build. I love I love Butterfly Satanic SF. Usually against heroes like Slark, SF doesn't want to like stand his ground and fight you. But with the Void behind, Slark can't commit. Are they arguing about what the name? I don't know. Ame was just like, he was like, I'm just going to hit the racks. And you just see some is like, what? Why? We have presence aura effect buildings. And there's still two heroes dead that die back. They're just going to right click this throne. It doesn't look like they can defend this. Lotus Orb up on the void. Yes, the disarm. Well. There will be a toss. Doesn't quite make it to the fountain, but it looks like Chalice might go down here. Does, but right <laughs> click, right click. Doesn't matter. The game is over. And PSG LGD at 38 minutes. They, I don't want to say, but it looks like they stomped secret that game one. Mid lane just was a complete yeah. disaster for this Pudge. And that was, it, as BSJ said, your last pick. This is why it's one of my favorite matchups, though. The SF usually goes nuke first, so he wins the initial wave. And Pudge has to survive and still stay in the lane, right? Because SF will apply more pressure. The mid one, unfortunately, just as you said, he got debated with the one archer and caught the three nukes. First 